Good afternoon, class. We are looking at exam for review covering sections 4.4 to 5.4. Basic integration formulas. FTC fundamental theorem of calculus. One of them is about the derivative of the integral is the function itself. And one of them is about indefinite integral. The integral of a to b f of x dx is capital F of b minus f of a. And the substitution f of g of x times g prime of x dx, where g of x is u, g prime of x dx is du, the same as f of u du, the concept of a u substitution having done properly. So these are some examples of an optimization problem. What we are going to do, we are going to look at one example today. And of course, you can refer to the lectures or this section for more examples. So a farmer wants to fence a rectangular field beside a river with 2,400 feet of fencing. The river itself will be one of the four sides, but dimensions will give the largest area. We should always have a setting, the drawing, and we should always define our variables. So we have the drawing. Here's the width x. Here's the length y. And we are going to come up with the largest area. So we want to maximize the area, which is x times y, the width times length, subject to 2,400 feet of fencing. Normally, the perimeter is 2x plus 2y. This side doesn't need fencing. So 2x plus y equals 2,400 would be the constraint. Area is a function of two variables. We solve for y in the constraint. We replace it here. Therefore, we make a the area as a function of one variable, namely x. When we do that, we must also come up with the domain. Dimensions must be positive, so x must be positive. On the other hand, if you look at this, 2400 minus 2x equal to 0, x is 1200. And if you choose x to be larger than 1200, this parenthesis becomes negative, the area becomes negative. So we have the restriction the open interval of 0 to 1200. We distribute. And now we are going to differentiate and set it equal to zero in order to find critical points. When we set it equal to zero, x becomes 600. There is only one critical point, x equals 600. So there is an open interval, one critical point. So whether it's max or mean, it's going to be an absolute. So the second derivative test, Here's a prime, a double prime is negative four. Negative means concave down. Looking like that. And that means max occurs at x equals 600. We put it back into either this one or this equation and we find the missing y. So the dimensions are 600 by 1200. The maximum area is their product of 720,000 square feet. And anytime we do applications, we pay attention to units. Initial value problem, dv dt is e to the power of negative t times one plus e to the power of two t. v of zero equals three, 
which means we have the following pair. We're going to multiply both sides by dt, and we are going to also distribute. When we multiply e to the power of minus t by one, we get e to the power of minus t. When you multiply it by e to the power of two t, they add up to just one t. And as I mentioned, you put the dt on the other side. So we are distributing. Take the integral of both sides now. The left side becomes v of a t. This one we divide by negative one, we get minus e to the power of minus t. This one is itself plus a constant. And this is the general solution. Because of this constant, we have a general solution. We have a family of functions. We plug in the pair, replace the t with zero, v of t with three. As you know, e to the power of zero is one. Therefore, we have negative one plus one. We cancel each other, c becomes three. Here's v of t. And this, is a particular solution. General solution, a family of functions with a help of a pair, we bring it to only one function. Find all functions G such that G prime is this. In other words, take the antiderivative or integrate. And here's a nice tip. Sometimes you will need to simplify first. Factor cancel, remove radical notation, etc. Sometimes you will need to integrate using substitution. In this case, this is one fraction. This is another one. Square root of x is x to the power of one half. This, was, this one has exponent one. So that becomes x to the power of negative one half. We can also simplify this one to two x to the power of four, so minus x to the power of negative one half. We are going to integrate this, and therefore, remember, g prime is dg dx, so we have to put the dx next to this when we want it integrate. The derivative of sine is cosine. The integral of sine is negative cosine. So it's minus four cosine x. Two divided by five x to the power of five. Minus one divided by negative one half plus one x to the power of negative one half plus one and a constant. So that's how you get this one. And again, four, you change it to five, you divide by now, this is one half, and this changes to two, minus two, x to the power of one half, which means square root of x. All right, we have uh, rational expressions. Sometimes you may even have just a fractional expression. We always <coughs> put it in lowest term if we can. So when we look at part A, 
we notice the top is 4x plus 1. In, in order to simplify, we have to have a factor of 4x plus 1 since this is number 2 we want. So no need to bother. Let the denominator represent u. The derivative of that is 4x plus 1. Therefore, du is 4x plus 1 times dx. If we put the dx at top, the top is du and the bottom is u. We know the integral is a natural log. So ln of absolute value of u plus a constant, replace the u and you're done. We need to keep the absolute value because the expression to x squared plus x minus three can be positive or negative. Now, why did I put these two questions next to each other? Because I want you to compare and contrast. They have the same denominator, but the numerators are different. The difference is that you can factor the top. The top is four times x minus one. Now, if we happen to have x minus one in the denominator as a factor, then it will become simplified and it does have a factor of x minus one. which means we have the integral of four over two x plus three dx. And now, if you let u represent the denominator two x plus three, du is simply two dx. And if we put the dx at top, we have a four dx instead of two dx. That means we have two times two dx. So I'm gonna write it in this fashion. I put the dx at top, it's four dx. And I'm gonna write two dx times two. Whether you put this two out or in doesn't matter. Please understand the numerator is two times two dx, four dx. But why am I putting it in this format? Because clearly this is du and this is u. And as you know, the answer is a natural log. Don't forget the number two in front and replace the u with two x plus three. And we must keep the absolute value and we are done. Now on the same page, I want you to see this, which is the reciprocal of part b. So if I go through the factoring, I get the reciprocal of the green part, the reciprocal of the green part, 2x plus 3 over 4. And I don't need a substitution. Again, I want you to compare and contrast. This is one fraction, 1 half x. This is another fraction, 3 over 4. x gives you half of x squared with this one half is one fourth x squared plus three fourths x and a constant and we are done. No need for a substitution in this case. So again, compare and contrast. Rational expression, rational expression. We should always put them in lowest term if we can. We cannot, we let the denominator be u. We've seen this in our lecture, by the way. du becomes e to the power of t dt. If you put this at top, then the numerator is du. which gives us natural law and a constant. Replace the u, you're done. We could use parentheses because this expression is always positive. In fact, it's larger than we got to five. I 
I've explained to you that this can't be factored because B squared minus 4AC is not a perfect square. We've done it in our lecture. Same thing happens here. And so you let the denominator x squared plus 2x minus 1 be u. Then du is a 2x plus 2 times dx. You can factor out the 2. So we put the dx at top and we notice number two is missing. So we throw in number two and one half. We can only do this with numbers. Remember the product must be one. We can only do this with, the, with numbers and it becomes one half, the integral of du over u, which is a natural log and replace the u. We are done and keep the absolute value because the expression can be positive or negative. Again, on this page, I want to give you the reciprocal of part A, the reciprocal of part A, meaning be careful. We don't have to do the substitution. Sometimes we have to, sometimes we don't in this example. This is one fraction, five e to the power of minus t. This is one fraction, which is simply one. Divide by negative one becomes minus five e to the power of minus t plus t and a constant and you're done. It's a simple integration. Before we move on with this, I want you to pay attention to this, which means theta is the independent variable. So when you want to integrate five, it's not five X, it's not five T, be very careful, it's five theta. Uh, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but the integral is positive sine, so plus two sine theta and a constant. Again, be careful with this. Anytime you have an exponential format, most likely the choice of you is the exponent. If we choose that, the u becomes five x to the power of four dx. So I'm gonna rewrite this and put x to the power of four next to dx. And when I compare, I see that du needs five and five is just the number, throw in five and then undo it, five and one fifth. And so now we have one fifth the integral of e to the power of u du, which is simply e to the power of u. So one fifth e to the power of u and a constant, replace the u and we are done. When sinusoidal functions are involved, if the argument has an exponent, that is the choice of you. Most likely. The u is 2x dx. We are going to rewrite the question by putting x next to dx. So in a matter of comparison, we see we need number two. We throw in two as well as one half. So one half, the integral of sine u du, the derivative of sine is cosine, but the integral is negative cosine. So negative one half cosine u and a constant. 
we placed you, we are done. But if we have sine as well as cosine, the one that has the exponent is the choice of you. Sine x has the exponent, so that is the choice of you. If cosine has the exponent, that is the choice of you. Because the derivative of sine is cosine and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. You got it just for the sine, negative sine, I mean. So the u is cosine x dx, and therefore you're looking at the integral of u squared du. Using the power rule, one third u cubed plus a constant, replace the u with sine x, and we are done. We want to evaluate the integral. This is a definite integral resulting in a number. There are two ways to do that. One is to keep the same variable ultimately in the same limit. So x is a polynomial of degree 125 minus x squared is a polynomial of degree 2 and is being raised to the power of 1 half. The more complicated polynomial, namely 25 minus x squared, is a choice of u. And the u becomes minus 2x dx. We are going to rewrite this, but I'm going to put the x next to the x. Again, it becomes clear we need minus 2. We plug in minus 2 as well as negative 1 half to undo this. And so this is minus 1 half, the integral of uh, square root of u du. And I'm not going to put the limits yet because uh, the original limits pertain to the variable x, not the variable u. We will get back to that. We're going to change this to u to the power of 1 half, so we can use the power rule on that. So this remains, and this is 1 over 1 half plus 1, u to the power of 1 half plus 1. And I don't need a constant because it's a definite integral. And again, I don't have the limits yet. We know one half plus one is three halves. One over that is two thirds. Multiply negative one half by two thirds, you get negative one third. And again, I don't have the limits. I'm going to change the u to 25 minus x squared, and I'm going to go with the original limits. But what are the new limits, if I want to go with the new limits? This is the lower limit. You put it here. You get 25 minus 3 squared, which is 9, makes it 16. This is the new lower limit. Twenty-five minus upper limit is four squared, which is 25 minus 16 equals nine. And those are the new limits. So keep the negative one third out, plug in nine and 16 in the following manner. So this is square root of nine. cubed means three cubed, 27. This is square root of 16 cubed means four cubed, which is 64, minus 37 times minus one third, positive 37 thirds.
again, you can go back to the original variable x, original limits three and four, or find the new limits and deal with them on a normal basis. Those make it a tad fast. But what happens in this case, any time the integral involves ln x, most likely that is the choice of u. And so what is the derivative of that? The derivative of ln x is one over x, so du becomes one over x dx. And I wanna show you both ways, this way or that way. So you recognize that. And I'm gonna write this in a fashion that everything will be separated and becomes clear. This is ln x to the second power. Then this part is one over x dx. So this is a u squared and this whole thing is du. Again, you don't have to do that. You can go from here to here, but I just wanna make sure it's clear. It uses the power rule, one third u cube plus a c and replace the u with ln. And I've mentioned that you must put it in a parentheses and keep it. Otherwise, ln of x cube without the parentheses means three ln x, so don't mix them. Anytime you have a, a rational expression, and this is not, this is a fractional expression because you don't have polynomials at the top and the bottom, you want to simplify, it can't be done. So let u be the denominator. So if I want to differentiate this, I get e to the power of x. Plus, if I want to differentiate this, I get e to the power of minus x times minus one. So the derivative of this expression is e to the power of x minus e to the power of minus x. So du is the same thing times dx. And if I put the dx at top, the top becomes du. Now the top is this. And the integral of du over u, we know the answer is ln u in an absolute value and replace the u with e to the power of x plus e to the power of minus x. And you can lose that, by the way. Because it's always positive, but either way is fine. A bacterial colony increases at a rate of R of t equals 2.2 e to the power 0.40 bacteria per hour. If the initial population is 800, five, find the population after 12 hours. So lowercase r of t represents the rate of growth or the growth rate and the accumulated change, the net change theorem says the amount of increase after 12 years would be the integral of R of T dt from zero to 12. And replace the R of T. Let's do the math. As you know, when we want to when we want to differentiate exponential, we multiply by 0.4. In this case, we are integrating. We are going to divide by 0.4. So 2.2 divided by 0.4, e to the power of 0.4 t from 0 to 12. And this is 22 divided by 4. which makes it 5.5. .5. And at this point, you have to plug in 12 evaluated, plug in zero evaluated and their difference. I'm gonna leave it for everybody to do the intermediate step. And I write it with a bunch of decimals and uh, we find it to be 600. 62.81, if we want to round it to a whole number, becomes 663. And the reason we do that, because it's the number of bacteria we 
rounded accordingly to a whole number. Initially, we had 800. This is the amount of increase. So we need to add 800 to this number and we get roughly 1,463. Again, I remind you of the second method, which means instead of finding this from zero to 12, we find it in general, which is this plus a constant. So again, remember from zero to 12, we came here and those are the limits. So the integral of that in general would be this plus a constant and the initial population is 800. That means R of zero is 800. So by the way, this is capital R of zero. So R of zero is 800. And I'm gonna leave it for you to plug in. And I hope you realize if you plug in zero, this becomes zero e to the power of zero is one, 5.5 plus what number is 800 is 794.5. So this is your formula. And now plug in 12. Again, what is the advantage of that? If we want the population after 12 years or 10 years or 30 years or 50 years, all we have to do is replace the T here. And in this example, give us the same number we got here back. Let's look at this example. We've already done that in our lecture. The rate of growth of a fish population was modeled by the equation g of t equals 30,000 e to the power of negative 0. 0.60 over 1 plus 5 e to the power of negative 0. 0.60 quantity squared, where t is measured in years since 2000. And g of t in uh, kilogram, kilograms per year. If the biomass was 40,000 kilograms in the year 2000, what is the predicted biomass for the year 2020 and rounded to the nearest whole number? So first and foremost, if lowercase g of t represents the growth rate based on the accumulated change, the net change theorem, then the amount of increase over the course of 20 years would be the integral of that from zero to 20, just like the previous case, conceptually. Uh, replace the lowercase g of t, with the function that is given, and this requires substitution method. And the way we do that, uh, we let the denominator without the exponent to be u. And as you recall, to differentiate this, this becomes the same thing times negative 0.6. So five e to the power of negative 0.60 times negative 0.6. And five times negative 0.6 is negative three. So that's how we arrive at it. So the same thing times negative 0.6 gives you that. Now, uh, you have a choice. You can keep the 30,000 out and then say you need negative three and multiply by its reciprocal or the easy way would be 30,000 is the product of negative three and one. What number, which is negative 10,000, keep the negative 10,000 out and the negative three in, so this whole thing in the numerator is du. And again, uh, we can go back to the original t or we will figure out the limits in a moment. So what we have here is u to the power of negative two. So one over negative two plus one, u to the power of negative two plus one. And that means one over negative one or simply negative u to the power of negative one. So we have this negative 10,000 and this is negative u to the power of negative one. Again, no limits. So this simply means negative times negative is positive 10,000 over u. What are the limits? If you plug in zero here, one plus five e to the power of zero becomes one plus five or six. If you plug in 20, one plus five e to the power of minus 0. 0.6 times 20. And I've shown you minus 0. 0.6 times 20 is negative 12. So the lower limit zero creates number six. The upper limit 20 creates one plus five e to the power of minus 12. 
And so you have 10,000 times one over U. Six, and the top is almost one because if you plug it into a calculator, this five e to the power of negative 12 is extremely small. And so one over one minus one over six, and it gives you almost 8,333. And as you know, originally the initial value was 40,000. We are going to add that. And this is the final answer. However, again, the second method When we integrated this, we came this far, 10,000 over u. So it's 10,000 over u plus a constant. 10,000 over one plus five e to the power minus 0. 0.60 plus a constant. And the initial value capital G of zero is 40,000. So from here, 10,000 divided by u becomes 10,000 divided by 1 plus 5 e to the power minus 0. 0.60 plus cg of 0 is 40,000. So you really have to work it out. And I'm going to leave it for you to do that uh, to figure out the constant. And the constant ends up being 38,333. Now, you want the population after 20, plug in 20. You want it after 30 plug in 30. So that would be the advantage of that. And so we have the final answer by plugging in number 20, which is given. I want to quickly look at one more example, which is an application. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's not too bad. It's about breathing. We can model the rate of airflow into the lungs by the function f of t is one half sine of two pi over five t liters per second. Where t is the time in seconds, find the total amount of air inhaled in one cycle, known as the tidal volume. Tidal volume if the cycle lasts five seconds. And what you have to note is that the time for inhalation is half of the cycle, in and out. So half of it in, half of it out. So that's why this is five halves. Therefore, the total amount is from zero to five halves, f of t dt, which we have f of t as one half sine of two pi over five t. So we want to find that. Uh, to evaluate this integral, we let two pi over five times t be u. And then du would be two pi over five times dt. So we let the argument of sine to be u and du is two pi over five dt. So when you look at this expression, you can keep the one half out. And then sine of two pi over five t, you can put the t at top, you can put it in parentheses, it doesn't matter, and dt, the whole thing. I'm gonna put this in a parentheses because when I look at this one, I need two pi over five. So if I throw in two pi over five, and remember two pi over five is a number, how do I undo it? The reciprocal of that. So I throw in two pi over five here, and then five over two pi here. I want you to pay attention to this. So therefore, what do we have? If you look at this one, is five over four pi. If you look at this one, is a sine u. If you look at this one, is du. Now, what about the new limits? Plug in zero in here, everybody. When I replace the t with zero, u becomes zero. So the lower limit zero results in zero. Let's plug in five half instead of t. If I put five half instead of t, I get two pi 
over five times five halves. I hope you realize these two cancel each other and we get pi. And those are the new limits. So five over four pi, the derivative of sine is cosine, but the integral is negative cosine going from zero to pi. So I take the negative out and I make it minus five over four pi, cosine of pi minus cosine of zero. So please understand I have accounted for the negative side. We know cosine of pi is negative one. So this is minus one minus, we know cosine of zero is positive one. So minus one and minus one, this gives you minus two. So you have a positive 10 over four pi. Or five over two pi or almost 0 0.8. And the units for liters per second for the rate, so for the volume would be in liters, 0 0.08 liters.